Welcome back to this week's episode. Today, my very special guest, Laura Harris. Laura, how are you doing? I'm brilliant. Thanks so much, Ellis. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Now, the reason why we're doing this voiceover well was because our editing software has collapsed on us and our audio was not sounding great. So we had to do this little voiceover. So yeah, we're just walking into the building now. Pleasure meeting you. You look lovely that day. Oh, thanks so much, Ellis. Do you know what? That was a new talk. Um, first time, special occasion and all that. So I'm glad well, that you liked it. <laughs> a special occasion for another very special occasion because we're talking about your artwork here today and all of the amazing stuff you've been up to. So tell us about your first artwork, which we're showing now. Yeah, so that is called Woman in Orange and it looks like the screen. So it's a new drawing that I did fairly recently using pen on paper. And I also make a lot of oil paintings, as you know, um, continuing on with my theme from lockdown about sort of, um, you know, anxiety and just ah, and that kind of thing. So, yeah, you can see the image there. It's um, it looks a little bit like um, the very famous picture of the screen but um that's not really what inspired it but it's um of course sticking to the theme of, of women of, of which most of my work is about women and how they are portrayed in society yeah of course and you know we just wanted to sort of highlight quickly the color orange because that was a brilliant unique taste and and twist for that one now tell us about this artwork Yes, so the one in the middle there, the lady with the jeans, actually that was really popular and I know that we talked about that before, about how when people pose for a photograph that has changed dramatically in the last sort of five to ten years and I just find it absolutely fascinating um, and I know that you do as well, whereas, you know, even up until about 20 years ago it was sort of quite Victorian, people sort of stood there with their hands down by their side and it was very formal, whereas now it's much more interesting when people have their photos taken for now you it's know, and pressing think, up the spine and trying to make sure that, you know, yeah. really weird angles as well. I, I yeah, it. it's kind of more theatrical and uh, I like that. So that's what that picture is about. Why do you think a lot of women do this in, in terms of photographs and pictures? Well, I think social media has had a big impact on the way that we uh, view ourselves and other people. So it's, um, you know, lots of models would have sort of originally done sort of quite outlandish things when they're being photographed but now the normal person when they're just out and about you know will also sort of strike a pose a lot more yeah. than people used to so yeah and yeah I remember talking here about why is it so important for you to essentially sign your work with your own unique autograph and you know how that protects from copyright and I mean tell us more about it I mean how, how does it essentially affect and protect your work that's a really, really good question. And so I sign my name L-E-H and the, the, the middle name is Elizabeth. So it just sort of makes me stand out because there's tons and tons of Laura Harris's in the world. Oh, <laughs> may not have um, so that's one reason why I sign it with L-E-H. But also it's from my years working more in the commercial art world. I've worked for a lot of auction houses. And um, it's really important. It's a really important way of sort of identifying the work that is produced. And if it doesn't have a signature, it's just much harder. Um, and it also means, as you've said, it's, it's really important in terms of copyright and making sure that my image and my identity um, and my branding is, is, is all on point. So, yeah. And that in really goes in, in terms of your sort of tote bags and, and mugs as well, you know, in terms of protecting your work as well. That must be unique as well. Benjamin. Exactly. Yeah. The tote bags and the mugs and other merchandise. I'm really keen to get the brand out there, get my name out there and my artwork. So it's just a really affordable way for people and, and a more functional way of having something maybe on your 
um, you know, your breakfast table, just a cup of tea, everybody needs those functional items. So um, yeah, I like to have those products as well available at the exhibition. And how does that help artists like yourself in terms of um, diversifying their work into, into new brands? Oh, absolutely. Merchandising is super important these days. Um, not everybody wants to have a picture on their wall or has room for that. So it just means that you can have smaller items um, that people can take away. And, and actually, people enjoy buying those things online and also at the exhibition. And it's just a way to, yeah, further enhance your sales as well as, as your, uh, get, get your name out there. So, yeah. And it's fun as well. It's fun to sort of make those products as well. Of course, it must be fun. It sounds fun as well. So um, you were you were not the only, your artwork was not the only artwork on display here. You was, you was um, joined by a few of your fellow friends in the industry as well. So tell us about the importance of collaborating with other artists. And Absolutely. So we just saw Lindsay Barretto's work on the uh, wall there. She's a photographer and... Yes, I like, I really, really like to collaborate with other people because it just widens the social network, it widens your customer and client and collector base. So we all invite different people to the exhibition and to the private views. And it, yeah, it just increases footfall into the gallery um, and sort of uh, people browsing your website as well. So it's always important to update those um, client lists. I have a mailing list as well. So just make sure that it keeps keeps those lists fresh and we and obviously people bring their friends and their colleagues when they're invited to an event or a tour or a private view at the gallery so yeah it's, it's good well, all around for all of the artists and we see the well, amazing artwork on display here as well as well as absolutely and beautiful work as well yeah, here we're going into the back room. This is Christina Carbonara's work. And this is one of my favourite pieces. It's called Graffiti. So that was one of the best works that she produced. Although actually the most popular one was the one right behind me, um, the one of the lamp. So a lot of people really like that piece. But yeah, she's really, really developed her style over the last couple of years. And yeah, so I'm really happy with her work this week. And that's um, Christina Carbonara. Awesome. And, you know... As we've seen, each artwork is very different from the other. That's How right. does that yeah. range show in your work in terms of, you know, I can do this, I can do that as well. Why is that so important? Yes, it's really good to have a, a sort of the breadth of work, different artists. Um, I'm quite interested in where the artists are from. So quite a few, as you can tell from the names, uh, Marit Dukner, Dukner is actually from the um, Czech Republic. Um, well, he's, yeah, Slovakia, but he's also lived in the Czech Republic. Um, Christina Carbonara is Italian-American. Lindsay Barretto, her surname is Italian, so she's part Italian. Um, so I'm the boring one because I have a very British <laughs> <laughs> sounding name. Um, but yeah, I find it really interesting to show um, these different types of artists together. Um, and it just, yeah, again, it just broadens our reach. There's sort of something that everybody, for everyone, really. So if you don't like the style of one of us, one of us, then you're quite likely to like one of the other artists in the exhibition. And I remember you were absolutely buzzing this day. You were so excited to show all of this off, and rightly so, because this is all amazing. What do you think the messages are in terms of the different artworks? Like, in the background, you can see the graffiti artwork. What do you think the messages are? Uh, in that and in your own artwork in which you try to show off. That's right. So Marek Dukka's work is sort of developed from being very figurative and, and sort of quite obvious. Uh, he used to paint pictures of famous people, usually people that have already died. Um, but as you can see, the images in the background here are, you know, you're not quite sure who they are. So there's an element of mystery going on in those works. Mm -hmm. So that's that's quite interesting. Um, in terms of my work, yeah, it develops all the time. It's semi-autobiographical, my work. So as I go through life, and obviously things happen all the time, I will produce work um, on and off. And yes, it's sort of an extension of, of me and the things that have happened to me um, as I go through my very interesting life. Guess, so. <laughs> awesome. And I mean, all of this work uh, must have taken a lot of time 
to to create and hit the stage where you know we're able to show it off in a shop like this how long was this journey for you and you know what are the highs and lows of this journey yeah that's a really uh interesting question it you're quite right i mean it's there's an awful lot of work that's produced that doesn't get to see the light of day because the quality isn't good enough so you know for example it's like it's like being a musician you might make 10 songs or spend you know three weeks in the studio but only a certain amount of that material is really good good enough quality and i've always found that in the past if i sneakily put in a picture that oh you know nobody will notice it's not that good um everybody notices that it's not very good and those pieces don't sell so um this having a physical exhibition and putting things online they're, they're your best work so yes there's lots of editing that goes on in terms of the curation of the, of the exhibition before we get there and obviously the hanging and the framing all of those things are really important um yeah likewise and i wanted you to touch a bit more in terms of that editing side how do you know when the artwork is ready good question it's it's more about it's probably the quality of the piece and mm. it, it's very subjective really i mean it's just my own personal decision i know that the artists have obviously edited out their work as well and decided which pieces to put in here we can see more of christina carbonara's work the two green pieces i really love um she's quite interested in uh georgia o'keefe an artist as well um so it yeah it we all sort of edit it down and then of course we get feedback from people as well which is one thing that you don't really get in the same way when you show your work online on your website it, it really does come from a kind of dialogue with people when they visit the exhibition and obviously when you came to to see the work as well you're sort of learning what my style is and what the exhibition is about so you're kind of a, a curator as well so all yeah. of the visitors that come to the exhibition are also curating it for me and feeding back of course now how back. important is that feedback for you to develop and build more work please oh really important for me it's second to none um i mean I, you know also we we meet i meet people at the exhibition or that pass by that i would not normally meet for example a couple of years ago um, a surgeon saw my work and I don't think anyone has ever seen my work as far as I know that was actually a surgeon and he kind of really understood some of the concepts I was getting at as regards um, body augmentation and that kind of thing so that was really interesting for me and that just wouldn't really happen or if it did happen if somebody was browsing online I wouldn't necessarily know what they did for a living um, so that can only really happen if you have something physically which is really interesting of course and for the people who want to find you online in your work where can they find you yes so they can find me at um nichesandnuances.com um i also have another website lauraharrislondon.com and also we are on social media so please do follow us at niches and nuances and then at laura harris london so yeah Make sure you follow Laura Harris and Niches and Nuance and support her and her next work and all of the amazing stuff she does. Laura, thank you once again for having us on. We appreciate it. Thank you for allowing us to come and, and see all of the amazing work you do and highlight how amazing you are. Ellis, um, straight back at you. I know that you're a very, very busy actor and I really appreciate your, your time. And also you're so fluid with the interviewing I mean it's like you've been doing this for 25 years so. <laughs> <laughs> guys we'll catch you in the next episode thank you very much for watching thanks so much Ella.